Howdy folks and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show today with uh, Ben and Lauren. And uh, we're just commenting because in our new studio, which you would have seen from the last episode, we um, the introduction music that you guys hear is what we used to hear in our old studio. So it helped us to sort of, you know, get a bit of a boogie on and we get the vibe and, it and launch and into the episode. And yeah. now in our new studio, we don't have the same recording setup. Well, our video it's still guys an said- awesome recording setup, but it's... Yeah, yeah. Designed well, a little bit differently and so. A video guy said I can just press record and then leave the room and leave you guys in there but it means he's not here to turn the music on and off. off. So Which is good press- for him because he doesn't have to. Well, he can get other work done. Sit there and get other work done. And but but we he, don't have the cue in music and it feels incredibly strange. So, so he, he just turned, press record, shuts the door and walks out. So it's just us yep. talking to a camera. <laughs> Which is in a room. Anyway. Like weirdos. Someone mentioned, I think uh, I won't mention the waffle okay. thing again because I think last time someone mentioned waffle. But someone People did say waffle on waffle it's your show. And so. like you say, it is well, our show. So we tried to cut it out. We can't. So getting into it. Uh, before we do, um, make sure you subscribe. Can you imagine if we were actually like friends in real life beyond just work capacity? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would hate us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're um, talking campfire cooking gear today. So before we get into uh, the nitty gritty of the episode, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening, whether that be through YouTube or your favourite podcast app. Um, we have talked a little bit about campfire cooking gear before in little bits and bobs. Um, a bit more specific. This is more general. Yeah, this, this is one. a bit sort of more general about – what gear you need. So we touched on it in episode three when we talked about cast iron versus spun steel. Mm-hmm. Um, we touched on it when we interviewed Harry Fisher in, I wrote that down somewhere, episode, episode 70. 70. And also just as a bit of a point of reference, episode six, we did a do you need a portable fire pit? So potentially another um, if you're someone who doesn't listen to these episodes every mm. week and you're just sort of picking and choosing content that's relevant to you, Um Episode six might be a good one on on whether or not fire pit is the right investment for you. So and episode your six set up. It's like nearly two years ago now. I know. It'd be really interesting to. I haven't listened to that one for a long time, and I the wonder other. if our opinions on that might have changed because that category's developed a lot in the last few years. Yeah, it has options. developed a lot, and it's an interesting thing to think about. I feel like um, potentially mine wouldn't have changed too much. I can't even remember what our opinions were. But honest. I think we both said. Nay, but that was purely because of our own individual setups, setups yeah. um, and camping styles. Um, and most most of the time, if we you were like, I don't really need a fire, yeah, um, because I'm super minimalist, which is totally fine. That doesn't. And changed. I was like, I need a fire, but a way bigger one than a fire pit can handle. Um, and that hasn't changed. But there are a lot of really awesome fire pits out now, and mm. the sort of space of fire pits in terms of um, you know, like cooking accessories and bits and bobs and things is sort of starting to develop and companies are getting a bit creative of how yep. they can make one compact. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, we've also sort of touched on campfire cooking a fair bit in Q&A episodes that we do as yeah. well. Um, I can't um, think of anything You do, like your style of camping, we've said it before, but your style of camping is pretty much based around the fire, right? You have a rolling fire. Correct, yep. Obviously during the non-fire yeah, yeah, yeah. band seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have a rolling fire that you manage when you yeah. go camping. You set it up and it, and it just rolls away for the entire yep. time. Yeah, so, pretty much. So um, you probably get, got loads to add to this one. I'm a bit more. It's sp- more I feel a little bit imposter syndrome right now mm-hmm. because this year has been challenging for a number of reasons and we realistically, it's midwinter and we've been away once compared to say same time in all previous years, we probably would have been away six or seven times already. So well, it's reflected with I'm me as really, well. I'm really, um, Craving really a getaway. feeling it, really <laughs> feel it. We were supposed, yeah. we were actually supposed to get away in the long weekend. That's not long gone, but we couldn't because we booked this campsite and it was a new one. We hadn't been there before Weather was all clear, but it rained uh, like on the Wednesday, which meant that we couldn't get in because obviously we don't have like a proper four-wheel drive mm. and the tracks to those campsites 
are not great. And do you remember that time yeah, I was where I got bogged? You're not bog your sprinter again, do you? <laughs> it was not too. It was not too um, sort of in the same region as that with similar kind of soils and all that sort of jazz. And we were like, you know what? It's just not really something that we want yep. to deal with this weekend when that's a high possibility. So. And the really rains here in South Australia lately, it's not like a little bit of rain. We've had like massive downpours, so it can go from yeah, quite accessible super, to super a flooded, super heavy, boggy mess. Like and- just 30 mils in mm. half an hour. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. So anyway, we're, anyway we're back topic to already. the topic at hand. <clears throat> so um, gear, So we're starting off um, with uh, – well, we're talking stuff that's specific to fires, but there is some gear that kind of crosses – like can also be used on a, on a yeah. gas stove. Now um, – like spun steel, um, uh, like the spun steel camp ovens have like a lid that basically serves as a fry pan. You can yeah. use it on the on the on the fire as well as on a gas stove. Mm. Um, people do cook with cast iron on a gas stove as yeah, well. Yeah, I do. You, at have home. you done that? Yeah, you well, have. Well, yeah. most of my cookware at home is cast iron. Okay. Yeah. Do you, does but you cook differently when you do it that way, right? Because I haven't used it on gas, but you when you when you use cast iron in a um, <clears throat> excuse me in a campfire, you put your coals on top, so you get heat from top and bottom. Yeah. But you can't do that in a gas stove. So do you just cook I don't, differently? I don't. Um, we we actually have like the enamel coated cast iron stuff for stove top, top cooking for pots and whatever. Right. But we use just the normal black cast iron skillets and things like that on, okay, yeah. on the fire. Um, but yeah, you can you could generally just put a camp oven in the oven if you wanted to. Yeah. It would just potentially take a little bit longer, I might think, to heat up than some of the more thinner ones because they do tend to be a little bit thicker mm. if they're campfire ones. It's but just like a big crock pot, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, if you've got a, a decent um, heavy-duty stainless steel or steel pot set that's designed for use at home, there's no reason why you can't use it on your campfire. You probably, it you know, it would get um, a little bit charred and potentially mm. a bit dinged up and whatever. It's not going to be like shiny at-home cookware once you start using it on the campfire. But there's no reason why you can't use decent quality steel stuff on mm-hmm. a campfire as well. So if you've already got those things at home, it's not like you need to go out and specifically buy. Yep. A, you know, a campfire dedicated or type yeah. of pot. Um, but things like aluminium or n- and non-stick type stuff, personally, I don't think is Well, they're not so good. good when it's really high temperatures, right, which you get, yeah. you know, in a campfire. So you got to, yeah, avoid the non-stick um, lighter weight aluminium and also be careful yeah. of any, um, I mean, I guess they're heat-proof handles, but I'm pretty sure some campfires would render a lot of those a melted mess. Yes, so, yeah, definitely. Just be mindful of your handles. So uh, in in talking about hot handles and things like that, like before we sort of get into the physical cooking ware side of things, I, um, you know, obviously growing up campfire cooking has always been a part of family camping and all that sort of jazz. But when I started doing my own sort of independent camping and doing campfire cooking, I didn't have fire gloves or long tongs and I thought, or like a lid lifter, you know what I mean? I just thought it would be, I'd be fine. And I sort of, was a year or two of of camping like that where I got away with it. But then when I eventually was like, nah, I'm going to buy some fire gloves, totally changed my life. Really? Yeah. I have so, no fire gloves. So. so fire gloves are things that I would consider or something that I would consider was is essential mm-hmm. and also – long, longer tongs, you know, like sometimes yep. even just barbecue utensils that give you a bit of extra length. Yep. They're fine because I've lost the hair on my – Fingers and arms, not that I have a huge amount anyway. So many times. One time I even singed my eyebrows. Oh, really? Yeah, because <laughs> which, you Here know, it's, it's all good. Um, yeah. But, yeah, story time. But, like, uh, because, you know, I had to get, like, right in there and I didn't yep. have the option of something yeah. a little bit longer. So I they're the, they're the things that I say are 100% worth the investment. Long tongs, fire gloves. The other thing that I also recommend is having like a paint scraper um, in your kit, like a metal one, Yep. because then you can just scrape off or scrape out your stuff. You don't always have to wash it or scrub it. It's very easy to just scrape it off when it's hot. And if you wanted to, you know, combine that with a decent spatula, you know, like those barbecue spatulas Mm -hmm. that double as a scraper and a spatula, you could do that. Yeah, okay. Um, But I find because they usually have a plastic handle, I don't like them a huge amount for campfire cooking, so I just use a paint scraper and just have like a longer-handled okay. um, metal spatula. 
We've got shovel lifted, listed here too, so that's something I definitely have, a long handled yeah. shovel so you can stand mm-hmm. back and scoop coals. Yeah. Um, but I, I just have um, just work gloves. Oh, like yeah. They're the work gloves, not as good as the fire gloves because yeah. they're not as thick. Mm-hmm. Um, long handled shovel and a lid lifter, so yeah. like a, a hook to, to lift the lid. Yeah, lid lifters are pretty good to too. Lift the, the, yeah. the camp oven in and out. So there's probably a, a short list of essentials you need to, to manage cooking. On the fire. Yeah, um, I would I would say actual- like there's nothing really outside of that that you would need in terms of accessories for mm. cooking. And and yeah, you could just use a tea towel instead of having gloves or whatever, but it's just a hell of a lot easier yeah. having gloves. Obviously that's ex- excluding food prep and everything. This is just managing yeah, yeah. the utensils in the yeah. fire. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you can't, yeah. can you can't imagine chop your carrots trying to with like your paint scraper. food prep with your giant big fire gloves on? No just thanks. Big anyway. mashed carrot with a shovel or something like that. We're getting a bit crazy here. Yeah, we are. So, uh, yeah, um, also as we touched on before, like we'll go into some campfire cooking gear but um if you are someone who's looking for a fire pit a lot of fire pits these days as i mentioned before they might already come with a barbecue grill or a hot plate or some sort of insert so if you're wanting to do just quite basic barbecue style cooking you you don't necessarily need and and you have a fire pit you don't necessarily need to buy additional gear if you're getting sort of like an all in one fire pit type yep. type setup so that's probably worth if you, a lot Noting of those well. folding ones have got a um, adjustable stainless steel grate yeah. that goes up and down. Um, one of them now has a little cast iron grate that goes in it as well. Yeah, a little cast iron, cast iron like dish. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few options there. Yeah. yeah. So we've got um, we run through. Now you've put this information together, um, the cooking on open fires, uh, yeah. starting with um, a very basic setup, mm-hmm. um, which is just a freestanding grill or hot plate and by that you mean just something that has legs that fold out and you stick it over the top of the fire yeah in its simplest form pretty much and i think that you could um you could unless you want to sort of get into baking and cakes and casseroles and stews you that's pretty much all you need realistically Mm. You could, even if you've got some saucepans at home and things like that, or you've got skillets or or whatever you've got, they can sit on those grills. Um, You can put coals under them. You can cook on them. You can use the grill like a barbecue, like the open-ended one if you want to do steaks or burger patties or whatever in that sort of more flame grill side of things. You've got the hot plate. You can do bacon. You can do Mm. eggs. You can even do toast on the grilled side of things. Um, As I said before, you can put your skillet and your pan on. So realistically – Having, you know, a decent, when I say decent um, size, I mean, you know, a size appropriate to to you, whether or not you're a family of six or there's just the two of you or you're a solo or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, you pretty much wouldn't ever have to buy anything else if you didn't have to, like if you you didn't want to. You got heat control with those is is very is it a common sense there as well you put it straight over the fire it's as hot as it's going to be if you don't mm-hmm. want it as hot put it next to the fire and put some coals underneath Correct. or if you want not as quite as hot a flame grill just put a smaller amount of timber underneath and yeah cook on that so that's how you get the, the heat control with one of those uh, implements. yeah absolutely you can easily just pop coals in and out and like fill it up even more it just sort of sits there and you can put it off to the side or it can have its little permanent spot. It's not overly massive. It's not taking up heaps of room. It doesn't require anything crazy to set it up. You literally just whip it out and get the legs out and put it down. Yep. It'll probably get greasy and ash and stuff all over it. So if you've got a good bag to store it in, then it usually yep. packs flat in the back of the car and yep. e- easy one to get in and out of Yeah, well. definitely. Yep. Um, camp Take ovens it. then. Yep. So is, you, you, like a lot of people start off with camp ovens, which I – find interesting but i guess it's like the quid- well, I, I did i've got it i don't have one of those i don't know why but i don't have one of the grills that we talked about before yeah but yeah got a camp oven. yeah and i think a lot of people were like oh yeah camp oven and i don't know if it's just because of damper you know like Probably. everyone sort of go to is oh, i'm gonna make damper yeah um but i sort of think that having a grill and like most of the time, if you're going camping, I'm just going to make some broad assumptions here, which obviously aren't going to be right for everybody. 
But if you're going camping, you're probably going to have a fry pan or a hot plate that sits on your gas stove Mm. and you're probably going to be cooking some sausages or you're probably going to be cooking some kebab sticks or you're probably going to be doing burger patties or you Mm. know what I mean? Like for for most people that's the sort of cooking that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So for for me – if you don't want to carry a stove and you don't want to carry all the gas and you're going to have a campfire anyway, it's just simpler and easier to just get a grill and mm-hmm. to just literally transfer the cooking that you're already doing. Yep. If And and when I, and I'm talking like super basic for people who haven't really cooked on the campfire before. Um, but then obviously with things like damper and stuff like that, you're not cooking on your camp stove. No, so the camp oven – I mean, you probably could if, if you, you wanted to, but the camp oven is more of a unique. Yeah, it's sort a bit, of. It's a bit more practice to cook in it. You could yeah. just cook a stew or anything, I suppose, and you can team that up with a grill. You could put your um your camp oven on the grill. Of course, you could. But yeah, for sure. Having a camp oven and a grill gives you both that cooking surface as well as an oven to cook in. But yeah. the oven side of it, um, for beginners. I'm not saying don't give it a go. Jump in and have a try. Definitely but your first stamp is probably not going to turn out perfectly. You need to kind of get used to yeah, the yeah. whole heat distribution. Like I think that episode that we did with King Brown and Mick Villa um, oh, up at right. ACOF, they were like, just give it a go because who yeah. cares if you burn it? And that's exactly right. But I think like if you're starting off doing um, like using a grill and doing sort of more hot plate cooking and more generic cooking like that, it's getting you used to working with a fire. Yep. It's getting you used to heat control. It's giving you a more of a tangible baseline for, oh, if this amount of coals roughly equates to this amount of heat. And I think sometimes if you're starting with camp oven cooking, like particular stews and things like that, less of a issue because that's more just like cooking in a saucepan, right? Yep. But if you want to do roasts or dampers or things like that, I think the biggest hurdle is people understanding temperature. Yeah. And so if you have experience with cooking on a fire through something like a grill, then you've got more of that introduction and understanding of how it all works. Does that yeah, make sense? Probably, more uh, familiarization prob- with it? Yeah, it probably won't make sense to people listening because I don't think it's – I don't know what you mean. It's not until you use it that you perhaps understand that a small amount of coal – actually radiates a heck of a lot of heat. Yeah. Um, and by using a grill and putting a small amount of coal under there, you might put too much and realise you've nuked your sausages and you went, actually, that, that small amount of coal puts off a lot of heat. I yeah, don't yeah. need to. And you also get used to how long it puts heat off for when it's out of the fire and when you might need to top it up. So, yeah, yeah that's all a good, good learning curve, I reckon. Um, but, yeah, so we've touched on – in episode three we talked about cast iron versus spun steel. So we don't want to obviously Won't rehash, all rehash that. too much of that. But um, they come, you can get camp ovens in a range of different sizes mm-hmm. and sort of shapes and styles, especially with the spun steel. There's a bit more like baduris are flat and wide yep. and the southern metal spinners are a bit taller and more traditional camp oven shaped. Yep. But basically the long and the short of it is that they're a really great multi-use thing. Like you mentioned earlier in the piece, they work really well as a saucepan um, and, you know, like generic pots and pans as well as a camp oven. And they're mm-hmm. a little bit more trickier to use as a camp oven, but they are a really good all rounder. Yep. Um, do you know the, the Bajuris are a flatter one? Do you know why they're flatter? Something to do with fitting in the in the pack, horse, the horse, yeah, the saddle sure pack for a horse, because yeah. that was designed. I don't know if we covered for a that, station. I don't know if we covered it in our last episode, but there's no you know, specific reason other than to make it more packable. Yeah, I, make I'm it more sure packable to, to, for transport Correct. a horse back in but the day. But with those, like the um, Baduri ones, for example, the lid sits over it like you know, like an upside down cap, mm. and then you can flip that over and use that as a fry pan if mm. you want. But then with a southern metal spinner's one, the lid sort of is inverted and nest sits mm. in the top. So then the top of the lid gets used as a fry pan. So yep. they're two sort of different ways of doing it. But then you've got a camp oven and you've also got a fry pan. Fry pan. Yep. And then you've got a saucepan. And then yeah. you like so they're they're a good multi purpose. Yep. And type good, thing. good to go straight on gas. You're gonna get if you put cast iron on gas, you've got to wait for a little while for all to heat through. Yeah. Uh, it's heavy to transport. The, um, the spun steel also um, really durable in terms of bouncing around. You can't crack spun yep. steel. It'll dent, but you can transport it. Yeah, So, um, but cast iron ovens obviously are really great for um, replicating what you would do in your oven at home, hence why they're called a camp oven. Yep. Um, and also your slow cooker. 
like doing yeah. slow cooked stuff, in my personal opinion, cannot be beat doing it in a can, can, cast iron camp oven. Yeah. Like lamb shanks and I think um, stu- just stews, even cur- curries, like oh, so good. Even the fry pans and stuff in terms of um, cooking like a large steak, so with an even distribution of heat, the cast iron distributes that heat quite well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and cooks better on a lower, a, a lower, slower, lower heat. Over Low and slow. Time. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. I, I know what you're trying, trying to say. To say. Remember um, at ACOF, which is Australian Camp Oven, Camp Oven Festival, mm-hmm. um, King Brown, I think it was, had a cast um, alloy camp ovens as well, which were pretty cool. Cast aluminium? Cast aluminium, yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, they were quite expensive. Um, yeah. But they're uh, basically like, he really liked them. He did, um, yeah. Basically like cast iron, but much lighter because it's mm. aluminium. So mm. I've never used them. But Me either. Cool. Yeah. We don't sell them at Snowy, so. We don't. I just thought I'd mention it anyway. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I sort of find that interesting as well because I think, I mean, I don't, don't come at me, anybody who's listening to this, but I think there is also information out there around alley, cut, like using aluminium cookware mm-hmm. um, and whether or not it's right for you or healthy for you and like. Yeah, I think it's You know, so it's sort yeah. of. Yeah, I don't. Uh, maybe I'm wondering if maybe that's why they potentially haven't taken off too much because possibly aluminium cookware used to be all the rage, didn't mm. it? And now it's just not anymore. Yeah, my understanding, and I think it's something people need to read into and and work out what their own position is on it. But um, I'm happy to, from my what I've read into it. Yeah, I'm happy to use it to like boil water, but I'm not happy to use it where I'm stirring constantly and I can scrape the surface of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and I mean, yeah. some people might. I think. I think. There was something that I've read one time about, and obviously if I'm having a conversation about this with my mates, I'll be like, oh, yeah, this, this. But obviously I'm in a podcast and people are listening to it and I'm yeah. like, I don't want to be you're like, I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about. Redacting what you're saying here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not redacting it, but what I mean is like I think there's like, you know, the information that I've come across is links to potentially Alzheimer's and stuff like that and yeah. like heavy metal content in food and all that sort of jazz. But it's like some people might go, Ma, who cares if I get Alzheimer's? Yeah. Like not a, not a risk factor for me that I care about. And other people might be like, oh, you know, that's a really big deal for me and yep. I'm not going to use that. And that's totally fine. It's the same with nonstick cookware. Mm. Some people don't want to use nonstick cookware. Some people don't care whatsoever. Yep. So, yeah, cast aluminium if it camp ovens. You, read into it. If you don't care about aluminium cookware, then that might be worth something worth looking into. Otherwise, grab a cast iron or a spun steel one from snowies.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Wendy. Uh, anyway, keep going. Anyway, keep going now. Uh, so um, that, for a very basic setup, one or both of the above is kind of all you need. Yeah. To get cooking on it. Yeah. Cooking some awesome food. I would I would say pie. if you're someone who is a beginner in wanting to do things like damper and things, I would probably lean towards cast iron. I'd probably recommend you go to cast iron. It's if easier to manage Primarily the heat. you're wanting to, if you're like, I really just want to crank out some damper for my family when we go away and that's really all I'm interested in, go with a cast iron oven instead of a spun steel oven. Yeah. I mean, still get a grill too, obviously, yeah. so you can do other cooking, but in terms of that baking side of things. Well, we had this conversation with a lot of people at ACOF and there's some are cast iron, some are spun steel, like there's no yeah. right or wrong. Excuse me. Um I do like cooking in cast iron because of the heat distribution. But in saying that, I've not actually cooked in spun steel. So yeah. it's probably a pointless comment that I just made. Anyway, so um, basically anyway. everything that we've talked about is all you need to just be like a campfire cooking wizard. Fry up some food and bake some a grill, basic stuff that tastes A grill slash awesome hot plate and a camp oven, long tongs, fire gloves. That's literally all you need. You yep. can the world is your oyster if you have that sort of stuff. But if you want to go next level. If you want to go next level and you're someone who's a bit fancy or potentially you're not fancy, you just have a lot of mouths to feed and a lot of food to cook. Talking um, from experience. Talking from experience. There are other sort of systems that you can get. Yep. Now I have a hillbilly. Um, which we don't we don't carry we don't hillbilly do there. hillbilly anymore, and I think I've mentioned it in the podcast, but it was something to do with like when COVID came and you know issues with sourcing raw materials and blah blah yep. blah, and not being able to fulfil 
uh, commercial quantities, mm -hmm. but you still can get directly from Hillbilly, which I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, but there's a couple of other brands that do something similar and it's essentially just this massive big spike that you hammer in next to your fire and you can get a range of different accessories. Um, Hillbilly in particular have a whole host of different things you can get, but you can get hooks on it to hang saucepans and billies mm -hmm. and you can get um, – Pun. You can get grill plates, whether that be a solid hot plate or an open grill. You can get fry pans. You can get woks. You can you can anything you want. Mm. You can pretty much get it, and it and it just you lift it a little bit and swing it into the fire, and you lift it a little bit and you swing it out. Yep. For those who are wondering, it's a little bit like what you see in some national parks where they'll have a fire pit and they a, do and have a post. them sort of permanently. Yeah, and it's yeah, just it's some usually just one do. hot plate that you swing over the fire, and then you swing mm -hmm. off the fire. Well, you can get your own setup like that with the yeah. stake and various. You can put heaps of attachments on yeah. it, like billy hangers and hot plates and grills All sorts of and even I think Hillbilly have even got like an actual like a wok attachment that yeah, you can cool. just attach the whole wok on there. So and so some brands will be like Hillbilly's. Um, very, what's the word? Not segmental. Um, oh, it's like an ecosystem of yep. products for that. But then other brands like I think Camp Companion slash Campfire, yep. they do just a generic comes in a box. That's all you can yep. get for so it type plates, thing. Like couple a couple of hot plate and a grill. Yeah. Yep. Um, and there's a couple of different. I think even Coleman did one at some stage. I yeah. don't know. There's a couple of brands out there, and there's a couple of options for that. I think that. They're a, a really cool system. The The things that I've found with it that can be a little bit of a barrier is that there's it's a lot and it's heavy. Mm. So it's not something that's really suitable for popping away for the weekend. It's something that, you know, three, three days at least is sort of something that mm -hmm. justifies carrying all yeah. that, that stuff. Um, or cooking for a massive group yeah, of people. Yeah, or cooking for a massive group of people. But, yeah, it is very heavy. Um, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain, you know, if you're not maintaining it properly, it can be a bit of a pain trying to get it in and out. And sometimes mm -hmm. it sort of slips down and then it's really hard. And so in terms of sort of management side of things, there can be a little tricky bits to it. And gotta sometimes it's not as – the ground sometimes as well. Which yeah, got to get the stake in the ground, you know. So I, I love it and it really suits – what we need it for. And I think it's a really great system. Um, but there are some limitations to it and I'm sort of starting to lean more. I've noticed when we go away towards packing just like a larger collapsible grill and mm -hmm. a couple of ovens and yep. sort of just trying to keep it to that. There's some quite elaborate things out there too. The, um, some things that we don't even carry at Snowy's is Os Osbra. And a Osbride, few other, they're quite, do you, some you cool can spend things. a heck of a lot of money on these sort of things and they've got yeah, some great ideas. So. If I had a heck of a lot of money, I would mostly be spending it on yeah, this stuff, I good, think. they good, aren't they? Um, tripod also. Is Tripods are, is a, yeah, tripods are, um, as as they sound, they're just like usually three, three legs. I think I've even seen one with four okay. with like a chain in the middle. Yep. But it depends. Like I've seen ones where um, there's like a big – inbuilt grill thing that you can sit pots on. Um, there's ones that you hang pots on that's hang the billy on. I've seen ones with multiple chains. Mm -hmm. I've also seen ones that are sort of like, uh, you know, those A-frame playground things in people's backyards. Like a, like a swing with a bar in the middle. Between, yeah, yeah, so it's like two triangles on one end and a bar in the middle and there's yep. things that sort of hang down from that and across the fire. And yep. there's a couple, there's a whole range of different sort of elaborate setups around and Lots available. Of backyard setups as well, people making their own. Things because it's really just if you can weld, yeah, it's just a bunch of metal put together with hooks on it so you can hang things over the campfire. And using a chain allows you to adjust the height, yep, and that is then heat management, yep. So, yeah, um, yeah, but that's, so a, that's a cheap option if you need to suspend something above the fire. And that brings in, we've mentioned here, billies as well. If you want to, mm -hmm. if you don't want to put the billy in the fire, you just want to hang it above the fire, yeah, tripods are a really easy way to be able to do that, yep, absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's about about it. Like I know we've sort of, if you're someone who listens to us fairly regularly, we've probably touched on a lot of this information before, yep. but we just sort of wanted to have a consolidated episode um, that really covers most of this sort mm. of stuff and the stuff that you, you essentially weed out what you need and what you don't need mm -hmm. when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, probably to summarise, if you want to get started, Without spending the earth, just get a grill. 
Yeah, if just you're get happy a grill. to cook some sausages or steaks or, or whatever and some fire gloves. Fire gloves yeah. and a grill. Um, if you're interested in baking, then a cast iron camp oven is going to get you your foot in the door without uh, spending too much. Um, yep. If you're worried about weight, then spend a bit more and get the, the sponge still. Um, and then just add the accessories that you think you, you might need. But starting with those two things, have a go with a few recipes and, and add to it as you think you need it. I know I got given many, many years ago a cast iron saucepan. Yeah. I reckon I've maybe used it once or twice. Mm-hmm. Um, and even thinking I should try and use it more, I, I just haven't. So someone gave it to me as a gift. But yeah. if I bought that because I thought, oh, I might need it, then it would have been a waste of money, my I own money, because yeah. I didn't use it. So for the cast, the camp oven, I have used heaps. So start with what you know you're going to use Yeah. Uh, and add to that from there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I would also, um, you know, if you're someone who does cook on the campfire a lot, love to know what your absolute essentials are, yep. um, whether you also think a paint scraper and fire gloves are essential or if it's just me. I think there's going to be some stuff that's pretty universal, but if anyone has other little tips or tricks or things that they have in their campfire cooking kit where that they're like, no, nah, this is a 100% mm. um a not to be missed, please let us know. Do you know that's the second painting item that I've found out is quite useful also for camping because the paintbrush is useful for camping as well. Yeah, you said that. Have I? Oh, I'm breaking yeah. record now. You, no, you've said it not this episode but you've said it in the past about a paintbrush. Oh, yeah, just for, um, you know, you pulled up after a dusty track and you just need to dust the back of your car before you open it up or cast like little on a camp seals oven, or just in your door grooves or clean the ash off your off yeah, your car. Now, yeah, paintbrush and paint scraper. There so, you go. So go go to Snowy's and then call in past Paints R Us on the way home, <laughs> whatever your local paint store is, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and get yourself some me. painting equipment. Yes. Anyway, um, uh, we should have mentioned too that a lot of this stuff can be uh, set up somewhat permanently as well if it's a uh, um, uh, like the the hillbilly stuff, which is yep. steel. You could kind of set that up in your backyard semi permanently. Yep. Um, and use it from there. As long as you're sort of using your gen, same with fire pits, right? Any sort of campfire cooking related stuff where it's going to be exposed to heat and different temperatures and potentially different weathers, Mm. just a coat of oil, you know, like a cheap, a cheap can of cook, a cheap can of cooking spray oil or whatever. Mm. After you're finished with your cookware, just give it a wipe down, a scrape off and spray it with that. And you're laughing. Yep. Cool. Cool, man. That's a simple view on campfire cooking. Let I've, us know your favourites, favourite uh, recipes as well. I've also realised that we have, um, with our change of studios and everything around that, we've forgotten to do our story of the week at the end of our episodes as well, or story well, of the been, fortnight now. But It's been a bit frantic lately. has been a bit frantic lately. We'll squeeze another episode in. We'll get back on top of things. We'll shortly. get back on top of the stories of the week. Stories well, we of the fortnight. We don't want to come to you with nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you have a story of the fortnight that you want featured on the podcast, that's also probably a good opportunity to yeah. chuck it in the comments or go on the Facebook group and post about it. We could talk about, um, I can't, oh, I didn't check. Uh, one of our viewers on the Facebook group showed us as a, a video projector in his new Zempire tent. It was Kind of funny. Yeah, that is kind of funny. And also bit. that's an amazing Zempai tent, which we don't sell and there's not a huge amount of information around and videos around on it. It's like a big, I think it's the Delta Force, big yeah. canvas family heavy cabin, cams, heavy duty tent. cabin tent. If you are interested, you can uh, see that video on our Facebook group. Anyway. Yeah, check it out. Better go. We're done. Better go, folks. Thanks, guys. Catch you later. See you next time.